GL Robotics and we are excited to announce our new partnership with Will at Studio Zombie 3D. Our goal at GL Robotics is to be your go-to source for 3D printing. We will primarily be focusing on the AnyCubic line of 3D printers, but also may offer other tutorials and printers and slicers as well. Today, Will is going to cover the basics of getting started on the Cura Slicer, how to download a file from Thingiverse, and printing it using the new AnyCubic Viper. He sets up a great foundation for those new to 3D printing, but so you can also still get high quality prints. This is the first video in the series, so make sure you hit subscribe and click the little bell down below to get notified on any new videos. Without further delay, here's Will. Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here with a longer look at Cure. Let's get right into it. First thing, in the upper left, we have your file menus with file, edit, and your preferences. On the right, this is your print settings tabs. This is where your profile will be loaded and where you adjust your settings. In the upper middle, we have your prepare, your preview, and your monitor tabs. Then you have your open, the printer, and your filament. This being your main workspace. First thing we're going to check out is the marketplace tab for a plugin that I suggest everybody install first, and that is the setting guide plugin. This plugin will give you a lot of information on each setting as you have over them, making it a lot easier to understand what each setting will do. Also very handy for infill patterns as it has a brief explanation of each of the patterns and their pros and cons. There are many other plugins and I suggest you take a look to see if any of them will be of use to you. Next, let's take a look at the Cure Preferences. First we have the General tab. This is where you can set the program theme and the currency you use where you live for cost estimation. These settings are pretty basic and most of them can stay as they are. Next up, this is the most daunting part of setting Cure up for sure, the Setting Visibility tab. I will have a PDF in the description below which you can download, use, and see what settings you should have visible to make the best out of your prints. The settings visibility is definitely one of the hardest parts of getting Cura set up. Be sure to check the PDF in the description for a hand on how to set it up. Next, let's move into the printer section. This is where you're going to add your machines. I already have mine in here, but I will show how to add one as well. First thing you're going to do is click on Add, then Non-Network Printer. This will bring up a list of printers. Find your printer and then click on it. In my case, it's an AnyCubic Viper. Once you find your printer, click on Add. That will take us back to the main screen. Next thing we're going to do is click on Machine Settings to make sure the settings are correct. This is where you have your bed volume size, your start and end G code, and where you adjust your filament diameter and your nozzle size. I will have examples of the start G codes in the description below. Once you have made any changes you needed to do, click Close. Now we are done installing our printer and we can move into the next tab. Underneath the printers we have the Materials tab. This is where you can add custom profiles for the various materials you use. I personally don't use this, but it's a very handy thing to have if you use various materials such as PLA, TPU, and PETG. Just click on Create and then add the various options you need for the filament. Finally, moving down into the final tab of the Preferences, this is where you will import your profiles. I already have my profiles imported, but click on Import, Find the imported profile that you have downloaded, click on it, and hit open. Be sure to hit activate to make sure the profile is activated and working. There are various profiles available online. I suggest you take a look and find some that might work best for you. Now that we have our profile imported, let's take a look at our settings tree on the right. First, the quality tab. This is where you set your layer height and your line width. I have my layer head generally set to 0.2 millimeters. If I'm printing a finer or more detailed object, I will drop that to 0.12. This will, of course, increase printing time significantly, but the quality will be amazing. The same applies to the line width. The standard practice is to use a line width of 1.20 times the nozzle diameter, which for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle ideally would be 0.48 millimeters, but a lot of people use 
0.45 or 0.4. I personally use 0.4 as I find it giving me the best quality overall. Under quality we have our wall section. This has all your wall settings such as number of walls and your ZCM settings. The only real settings here I change myself are the ZCM options based on what I'm printing. If it is a square object I like to lock the seam to the corner. You can do the same for round objects, but you have the seam line to deal with after printing, so I suggest locking it to a side that you won't be visible. Continuing down, we have the top bottom section. This is where you set how many layers you have on the bottom and the top of your print. I find 4 or 5 is more than enough for the bottom. For the top, I will use more. Generally, I'll use 5 or 6, maybe even 7. I find that will give you a nicer, cleaner top finish. You also find options for your skin overlap and your ironing here. If you're running Cure 4.11 and up, you also find a monotonic top bottom order. This setting enables users to print parts with a smoother, more aligned top finish. This is useful for parts that need a better visual finish on the top. Next up, we have one of the tabs that I find I adjust the most. This is the infill tab. This is where you set the density and the pattern of your infill. Myself, I tend to stick to the grid and cubic infills on the majority of my prints, but with the setting guide plugin, it will allow you to see what each pattern is, what they are best for, and what the pros and cons are. Try the different ones and see which are best for you. You also have the option to randomize the infill start and infill before walls. This is also where the gradual infill step option is. For some of the patterns, what it does is increase the infill density the closer it gets to the top. For example, if you set the infill to 90% and have 5 steps, the top of the print will be 90% with infill and the bottom will only have 2.8%, making the top stronger with a cleaner finish. Now we're moving into the material section. This is where you have your printing tips and your nozzle fold percentage. You will need to calibrate the flow to get the best quality from your printer. If you have Linear Advanced enabled, you will also find the option here if you enable it in the Settings Visibility area. Moving down into the Speed tab. This is where we set our print speeds and our acceleration and jerk if needed. As an example, this is my profile for my Anycubic Viper. The majority of my prints is set to 70 millimeters a second. But my outer walls I set to 35 or 40 to give me a nice cleaner finish. I also set my support and infill to the same speed as my print speed. My top cell item speeds are set to 40 and my travel speed is 120 millimeters a second. I also have my initial layer set lower to help the print stick to the bed so I have that set to 35 millimeters a second on all my print. Moving into one of the most important tabs, the travel tab. This handles your retraction and combing settings. These work together to reduce stringing and oozing while you're printing. The retraction distance is how much the extruder pulls back the filament to reduce the pressure in the nozzle to compensate for the melted material in it as the printhead moves to the next point. Too low of a setting, you will get stringing and oozing. Too high, it'll retract too much and when it gets to the next point, the nozzle won't have enough melted material in it or pressure to start printing. Then you will get missing sections of your walls. This one can take some fine tuning based on the material printing with, but it's very important. Next up, we have the support section. This is easily one of the most important and confusing sections in Cura. You have two options here, based on what you have. Now we're moving into one of the most important and confusing sections in Cura, the support section. This is where you can enable and disable all the supports based on your needs. You have two options here, normal and tree supports. I generally use normal supports for the majority of my printing but there are occasions such as busts and some statues where tree supports will work better. There are many settings here and it can be a lot to take in when you're new to Cura. My suggestion is to find a good pre-made profile that works well and check support settings they have and adjust where needed. Your main considerations here will be the support structure, the overhang angle, your support pattern, wall count, and your distances for the supports, such as the Z distance and the XY distance support will print from your print. You'll also find the option for enabling support roofs. This will print a pattern on top of the supports to help support the overhang above it. We will take a deeper look into the support settings in a future video. Let's continue into the build plate adhesion tab. This is where you enable the brim, skirt, or raft for your prints. Most people like to use a skirt just to have the nozzle primed and ready to print. I personally use brims with many of my prints just to help them stick and stay in place as it's printing. Then you have the raft option. 
This will print the bed under the print itself. This is very handy if you have a very uneven bed that you just can't get level. But I find that it uses a lot of filament and I try to avoid them where possible. This is just personal preference though. Dual extrusion doesn't apply to most people so we'll just move down into this mesh and special modes. First, the mesh fixture section. The section only has a few options to use for my printing, and that is unit overlapping volumes and the maximum resolution option that will help smooth curves and circles, but it will use more processing power. But this isn't an issue with newer units with 32-bit CPUs. Underneath that, we have the special modes tab. This is where you'll find the print sequence options, your surface mode options, and spiralize outer contour mode, otherwise known as vase mode. This is where it's just one long print with no retractions. You'll also find an arc welder here if you have it enabled. It is a compression and anti-stutter tool I find useful in my printing. And finally moving into the final tab of the print setting panel we have the experimental setting. This is where you'll find special options such as coasting, infill travel optimization, fuzzy skin, adaptive layers, which will vary the layer height based on the settings enabled. This option can help reduce a clean print without sacrificing as much speed due to a single layer height, but it can also add time. I suggest you experiment and see if it has any benefit to you. The other options I have showing are the overhang wall angle, which will slow the printer down on steeper overhangs to help reduce sagging. You also find bridge settings here, which will control your speed and fans on bridges based on how you have it set. The final thing I have on my cure setup is a small hole max size. This is relatively new to cure. What it does is slow down the print speed on smaller, more detailed sections of the print without slowing down on the easier parts of the model. A very handy option to use. Now that we have finished taking a look at the interface and the preferences, let's take a look at loading and slicing a model. Let's start by going to Thingiverse. For this example, I will be using the support test piece. I'll have a link in the description below. Click on Download All Files. Once it has finished downloading, you're going to have to unpack them. You will need WinRAR or another decompression program for that. Once it's finished downloading and you've unpacked it, remember where you saved it and we'll move on to the next step. Now let's move back to Cura. Click on the folder icon on the main screen. Then pick the folder where you saved your file from the last step. Here's our file right now, but it's not orientated properly. This is where the toolbar on the left side is going to come into play. We're going to click on the third icon, that's the rotate icon, and then click on the third icon on the menu that pops up. This will align it to its face. Click on the front of the model and that will lay it flat. Next, you can click on the move. This will allow you to move the object around the workspace. The other icons on the left side toolbar from top to bottom are move, scale, rotate, Underneath that we have the mirror tool, then we have the various mesh tools. Underneath that you have your support blocker and then your measure tool. Under the mesh tools you'll find various options here, which we will explore further in another video. Now that we have our model loaded and orientated right, you will notice that on the other side of the model there are sections that are showing up red. This is where we're going to need a bit of support. First thing we're going to do is go to the right print settings tab and scroll down to supports. Click on the generate supports box. The stock support settings should work fine here. Double check the overhang angle and for my vapor I generally have it set to 65%. Next we're going to hit slice. Once it's done slicing, we can hit the preview button beside the save the disk. This will show us the layers of the print. And there we are. You will notice the blue section underneath where the supports are needed. Those are the supports that will print on our print. Next, let's just save this file and save it to the SD card and go to our printer. Alright, click save the disk. It will give you an option if you want to save to removable media. This is the easiest way. Once it's saved, be sure to reject the SD card. Next, let's move over to our printer.
And here we are. Just load the SD card into your printer, and then move over to your screen and load the file. This is the screen from my Anycubic Viper. First, I'm going to run a level. And here we are running the level process. Next up, I'm going to go to the print tab, click on it, click on the file I've just sliced, and then hit print. And here's our piece printed. And here we are again 39 minutes later with our piece finished. Let's take it off the print bed and take a look. Looks like it printed pretty well with the profile I have loaded. Let's pull it off and see how easy the supports are to get off. First, lift will peel off the brim. Pop off the one support. Nice and easy. The second support I'll use my pry tool to help. And that support comes off real easy. And then the final piece of support here. Nice and clean, the walls are solid, and the corners look good. You've just printed your first model and you're ready to go. Download a bunch more and let me know how it works out for you. Alright, that's it for the video today everybody. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and check out our Instagram for more. Also, check the link in the description for our new channel partner, GL Robotics. He has some really awesome stuff on his site. Alright everybody, take care and we'll see you in the next video.